Industry on Parade visits a city in America's Midwest. It's a city that looks like many others at first glance, but it's really unique. For Grand Rapids, Michigan is famous the world over as the Furniture City. No less than 80 firms now manufacture furniture in Grand Rapids. Widely known and respected, these companies have given the city a reputation for leadership in style and quality throughout the industry. Entire buildings in downtown Grand Rapids are devoted to the display of the local products, which attract furniture buyers from stores everywhere. Twice each year, they come here to make their selections in showrooms filled with the latest and best examples of all the various styles. Whether it's Italian classic, or French period, whatever it is that the furniture buyer seeks, traditional, transitional, or modern, he knows intensive research and careful study are behind the authenticity and character of each piece. In these rooms is done the selecting that both reflects and influences the public taste displayed in the furnishing of millions of homes. As early as 1848, merchants started making trips to Grand Rapids to replenish their stocks. 1878 was the beginning of the city's more formal furniture markets, which offer, now as then, new departures along with familiar classics. The displays document America's increasing concern with the beauty of its offices, as well as its homes. As the city's museums demonstrate, Grand Rapids and the traditions of fine furniture making have been intertwined since the beginning, when William Haldane opened the cabinet shop recreated in this exhibit. Haldane started business in 1836, and soon met friendly competition from other shops that formed the nucleus of today's flourishing industry. Now a museum piece, it was this massive, intricately carved bedroom set that brought national prominence to the furniture city. The focal point of Grand Rapids exhibit at the 1876 Philadelphia Centennial Exposition, it won all the top prizes along with orders from the nation's biggest stores. Times and taste have changed, but not the city's preeminence in furniture making. In local libraries, Grand Rapids young men find unequal documentation on furniture design and construction. They are aided by the nation's only institution of higher learning that offers a three-year course in furniture design. And they have access to priceless collections of historic furniture, too. Collections of original pieces that make the history books come alive. Unmatched sources of reference on furniture styles make possible the detailed research of the past that's the foundation of the city's present and future. No other city of its size can match the concentration of top designers who work here today, guiding and inspiring the shape of the furniture with which Americans express themselves in the decoration of their homes. But good design is only one of the important ingredients of good furniture. Also of basic importance, the proper use of fine materials, like the wood that is shipped here from all over the world, then kill-dried before manufacture begins. Humidity must be carefully controlled in all parts of a furniture factory, and the early steps in manufacture are performed with the help of the most modern machinery, extremely useful in the preparatory work. At this stage, the machines actually outperform hand workers who thus are free to concentrate entirely on later steps that require skilled individual attention. Advantages of machinery and basic woodworking procedure were recognized by Grand Rapids craftsmen at a very early date. In fact, Haldane himself 
the city's first cabinet maker, installed machines around 1848. History tells us he brought a circular saw and a lathe from Ohio and started using it in a shop on the street that's now the city's main business thoroughfare. This is a sample of what today's machines can do, a look shaped on a modern automatic lathe. But most of the work must be performed by experienced craftsmen. Here, with great care, they select veneers for decorative surfaces. Each natural design is limited to a few sheets, so that one figure is limited to a few pieces of furniture, which never can be exactly duplicated. Selection is based on grain, texture, and color. Every piece must lend itself to the proper finish, and the pattern selected must closely matched with special attention to its suitability for one specific piece of furniture. Another exacting job is that of creating a parquetry tabletop from much smaller pieces, usually in a geometric design, laid out on a pattern that's used as a guide in the intricate assembly work. Here, pieces of teak wood are being used. Later, tacks will hold the wood in place temporarily. Each square or oblong is selected with a view to its special role in the overall effect of the pattern and each is fitted carefully, exactly into the allotted space. In this work, and indeed throughout furniture making, the craftsman must be something of an artist himself, just as the artist who does the designing must understand thoroughly all phases of the craft. Later, tape will be applied along all joints, and the tacks will be removed. Now the parquetry is nearly finished. The last tape is pressed into place. The completed work. It's ready now for pressing, then for permanent bonding to the base wood, and after that for the additional painstaking work involved in giving the tabletop a finish that will bring out its full beauty. The step of assembly depends on the skills in hand craftsmanship acquired only through years of experience. Drawers, doors, and other moving parts must be assembled and fitted to operate smoothly. In upholstering, as in woodworking, proud craftsmanship makes the difference. Here, springs are tied individually with meticulous care. This work will be hidden from the purchaser of the finished product, but the men who do the work have the same pride in it as those responsible for exterior features. Many workers here represent families with three and four generations in the Grand Rapids furniture industry. They know that the life of each piece, as well as its beauty, depends on how they do their work. Carvers still are employed to supply the fine detail that sets off many of today's simpler lines. And now, the finishing, often involving the hand application or spraying of shellac or lacquer. There are many different kinds of finishes, of course, depending on such things as the period and design of the furniture. And for each kind of finish, there are many different steps requiring hours and even days. Here is but one of the special finishing techniques passed on from one generation to another. It's the art of distressing a surface to heighten its interest. 
and it's being done here with the help of a chainer, one of the tools used in applying slight markings to furniture of traditional design. A piece of slag, as the apprentice learns, also may be used to impress tiny nicks and scratches that are highly prized in certain special finishes. For other pieces of furniture, completely different techniques are used. But regardless of the type of finish, the highest skill is required. Whether it's a distressed finish like this, or the smooth finish of the most contemporary piece, one slip could be costly. The liquids used in finishing generally are hand-mixed. Various stains are employed, along with bleaches and spirit colors. The idea is to enhance the grain of the wood, rather than to cover it up. To build the finish in, rather than to lay it on top. Rubbing cloths, pads, and small brushes are used in this type of finishing, which strengthens some lines, softens others. Where the grain needs accentuating, an experienced eye detects it, and a skilled hand applies a subtle touch of color. Slowly, carefully, the materials are worked together in smooth uniformity to achieve the highlights and shadows that characterize a fine finish. This depth and definition mark a furniture masterpiece. While accenting the importance with which hand skills are regarded in Grand Rapids, the city that built its fame with its furniture. After a century of experience with fine craftsmanship, its people like to say with pride that their city is among the few in the world renowned for doing just one thing well and successfully. It's in the home, in homes throughout America and overseas, that the people of the Furniture City find greatest satisfaction for their long emphasis on the one industry that brought them fame. Fashions change, but not the traditions of good design and quality workmanship that are the pride of Grand Rapids. Traditions that add warmth to everyday living today as they have for a hundred years.